Today I want to talk about an electric dipole in an electric field. So the definition of an electric dipole is a negative charge and an equal but opposite positive charge separated by some distance 2 times A. Okay, so this is negative Q and this is, they have to be the same equal and opposite magnitudes or they don't constitute a dipole. So the definition of the dipole moment it's a vector quantity. It's 2A times Q. And that's called the dipole moment. And the direction of P is from the negative to the positive. So it goes this way. Okay. Now, if you put a dipole moment in an electric field, it will feel a torque. The net force will be zero, but there will be a torque. So if you consider an electric field that is running in that direction and you put this dipole in this field, the positive charge, so this is the electric field vector, the electric force on the positive end is QE, the electric force on the negative end is also QE, but in the opposite direction. And you can see that if you put your axis of rotation here, that that dipole will rotate in that field. So the angle between the field and the dipole moment vector is given by theta. And you can look in your textbook if you derive this. This is P cross E. Okay, now. Notice that the net force is zero, so that dipole will not translate. It won't go up, down, left, right, or in, out, but it will rotate. Okay, now associated with this rotation is a potential energy. So if you displace the dipole, say perpendicular to that electric field, and then let go, it will rotate. And so you have stored up potential energy by putting it in that original position. The expression for potential energy is the dipole moment dot the electric field. Okay, so what are the consequences of this? The consequences are that electric dipoles, depending on their position in an electric field, will have maximum potential energy, zero potential energy, or minimum potential energy. And that's an important concept to understand. So let's consider an energy hill that looks like this. Okay, and so the, this will be the electric field vector direction, and energy will increase this way. So our job here is to take that dipole and place it in this electric field in the, on the top of the hill, on the flat part and at the bottom of the hill, in the correct orientation so it has maximum energy, minimum energy, and then zero energy. The way to think about this is imagine that you're doing this in a gravitational field with a ball on a stick. So you have this ball on a stick. Imagine it like a pendulum. It can swing around this axis of rotation. In what orientation can you take that ball on a stick and place it in a gravitational field so it has maximum energy or minimum energy? Well, minimum energy would be if it hangs straight down. So if you take the ball on the stick and you put it in this position, that would have the lowest possible energy. That's where it tends to go if you let it go, if you let it swing. The maximum possible energy, so the question would be, if you're standing underneath this ball on a stick, somebody's going to put it in a position and let it go, what position should it start in to, to hit you on the head the hardest? And that would be when it was up like this. Well, I'll put it down here. That would be if the ball was at the top. And so if someone positioned that ball on a stick like that and let it go, that's going to have the maximum potential energy. It's going to swing down and bop you in the head with the biggest force. Now, in between would be if it was in sideways positions like this. Okay, so these four orientations of this ball on a stick represent here on the left, this is maximum energy. So that's maximum potential energy. And this would be minimum potential energy. 
Now what we decide to make zero is completely arbitrary. Usually with a ball on a stick, we, we let the minimum energy be zero. But we're going to see with the dipole, we prefer it to be zero halfway between and not at the bottom. Okay, so orienting this dipole in a position that has minimum energy is when the positive end is down. So that would be like the ball hanging down. Okay, so that's the minimum energy position of a dipole in an electric field. It's when the positive, well, it's when P aligns with E. That's minimum energy. Now, if P is anti-parallel, so if P points up this way, the dipole moment, that means the negative's at the bottom and the positive's at the top. And then halfway in between, doesn't matter whether the positive's to the right or to the left, but halfway in between is when it's sideways. So that would be halfway in between max and mean energy, and then this orientation would be also halfway between. Okay, so let's look at torques and equilibrium situations. So this is in equilibrium. If you put it in that position, displace a little bit, it'll, it'll swing back to that position. This actually, this maximum potential energy, this is also in equilibrium. If you balance it just right, it's not going anywhere. This one is definitely not in equilibrium, and neither is this one. It's exactly the same with our dipole. This position here, this is in equilibrium. There is no torque on that. But it's definitely unstable equilibrium because if you give it just a little bit of a tap, it's going to swing. So this is in equilibrium, but this is unstable equilibrium. This minimum energy, this is also in equilibrium. But this is stable equilibrium. If you displace that a little bit, it's going to swing right back to where it, it was. So this is getting a little messy here. Um, this one is stable. These two, these are not in equilibrium. So that's not equilibrium. It will not stay there. It will swing. And it will swing because there's torque. This is also not in equilibrium. Okay? So, if you... That's why there's this negative sign in this potential energy formula. Negative P dot E. If the dipole moment vector and the electric field vector are parallel to each other. This gives you a negative potential energy and that's a minimum energy. And that's this situation here. If they're anti-parallel, it gives you a positive potential energy because P dot E would be a negative number. Okay, and it, in between it just happens to be zero. It doesn't matter. So for example, if we assign numbers, we might have the potential energy up here is plus 50 joules. Potential energy here would be zero. Potential energy down here would be negative 50 joules. Max, zero, minimum. Okay, one more note. If you're needing to calculate the electric dipole and you're given the position of the charges in the xy plane, so say you're given a charge Q is here, and then maybe a charge negative Q is... Uh, Put it somewhere so it's you can see a little better. Say negative Q is up there. And so you're given this R vector to the positive charge. And then you're given this R vector to the negative charge. The 2A vector points this way. That's 2 times A. And if you do the vector, if you, you can see there that r negative plus 2a equals r positive in that vector triangle there. And so to get the 2a vector, you take the r vector of the positive charge and subtract the r vector of the negative charge. And so that's how you get um, the dipole moment. And then p, the p vector is equal to the 2a vector times that charge, magnitude of the charge.